What's up everyone and welcome to the first video of the year for my channel. Uh, this video is going to be very lengthy just like the one I started with last year when I did the 10 years of owning a TSX. Uh, this one is going to be about the most frequently asked questions when it comes to the TSX and how to build it. Uh, it will more or less be a build guide whether or not your car is stock or you've already started working on it. Uh, this will be a build guide for you. It should help out listing different parts, uh, different suppliers, and hopefully you are able to uh, you know, gain some information from this. And build your TSX a lot easier with a lot less steps or you know, a lot less mistakes than I had to go through over those 10 years. To begin with, I'm going to shout out HeelToeAuto.com because they gave me a code which is going to allow everyone that's watching this video or anyone that's using the code uh, to get 5% off your total cart. Most of the parts that I'm going to be talking about, you can get on Heel Toe. I'm going to leave a link in the description on how to get to their website. Uh, of course, I'll leave the code. The code is also displayed on the screen. Um, I'm also going to add a bunch of different links to the parts that I'm listing. That way, you can just click a link, find the part, and hopefully compare prices with your local car shop. If not, you can just buy it online. One thing I am not going to be getting into is wheel and tire. Uh, everyone has a different ride height, different camber, different alignment setup overall. And if I'm going to give advice on a certain wheel that's going to fit, it's probably not going to be the best advice. And I don't want to set anyone up and then have them come back and tell me that uh, it's because of me they scraped their rim on their fender or something. You know, uh, it's just too complicated when it comes to doing wheel size. So I'm going to stay away from that. I'm also going to be staying away from any type of audio. I mean, I do have experience with putting audio in vehicles. I did have audio set up in my TSX before, but this video is going to be more geared towards uh, performance parts and uh, a little bit of you know style parts in that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to get into is starting off with the engine. I'm going to go through pretty much intake to exhaust and everything in between. Uh, first thing I would say, if you're going to buy an intake, you're more than likely wasting money on a type of brand or maybe a special type of piping. Uh, my recommendation would be to just get a vibrant piping and a filter of your choice or you can also order the vibrant filter off the website. You might as well if you're going to visit the website to buy the piping. So you can pretty much just get you know the straight pipes, the elbows, some connectors and clamps and a filter and kind of fabricate a intake for yourself. It's going to be the exact same as any intake that's offered for maybe four, five hundred, or you know some cheaper intakes for two to three hundred. But I think if you were to just you know put pieces together, you might be able to put it to work for under maybe one fifty. I would say, but it all depends if you want to go with a short ramp or a colder intake. But it's going to work out a lot cheaper to just build it yourself for the intake. Now going on to the intake manifold, of course uh, Superstreet.com released an article many years ago on uh, the K20, I believe they used a Civic and they did a test with all the different manifolds that can be used on the K-series and it came out with the best and the worst and of course it's always available to go back and uh, read all the different specs on the, each manifold but the best manifold is going to be the RRC which is also the most expensive and the worst manifold is definitely going to be the TSX stock manifold. It's a two-piece design. It's completely garbage. I'm not even sure why Honda even decided to make that when they did the prototype design. Anyhow, if you want to get the best manifold for your car at a cheap option or a reasonably cheap option, I'm going to tell you to go with the RBC RSX manifold. Um, it is the best option when you're looking at whether you know you can uh, port it. Uh, you don't need adapter plates and you can pretty much port match it to the throttle body and intake fairly easily it has a lot of meat and it's available everywhere like it's either people are parting out or selling their old one even shops are taking the time to uh, buy that rbc manifold have it ported and ready for you so rbc will be the best option when it comes to uh, intake manifold there's always Skunk too if you want to spend some more money, make something look fancy. They have their, uh, you know, the black design which looks really great in engine base. But I'm going to stick to uh, the RBC. It's what I'm using on my car and I have no issues with it whatsoever. Of course, if you're going to do the porting on the intake manifold and you have a nice big exhaust. 
Of course, if you're going to do the porting on the intake manifold and you just you know set up your intake all nicely, you're going to want a nice throttle body. Uh, the best option for the throttle body is the OEM ZDX uh, throttle body. It's uh, I think 80 millimeter inlet, which is amazing. Uh, there's also the Grams throttle body, which is what I'm using, which is a 79 mil inlet and a 72 outlet, which is a little bit bigger than the ZDX, but of course, if you want to stay OEM, which never fails, I would take the ZDX with the adapter plate, and I believe it's a, um, there's a write-up on exactly how to do it, but there's also the TLS throttle body, which was an option, which uh, I think was an early option before all these uh, cars start getting faster, more performance-wise, the ZDX one was uh, seemed to be a lot better, and it is a bit more expensive, and I know the TLS is available everywhere, but I would still pick either the CDX or Grams and leave the TL for if you just want. Next up is going to be the injectors and fuel rail. Uh, I'm using the Skunk 2 fuel rail on my car. I know they have a newer composite version out. There's also the K2 in fuel rail, which is amazing. And in my opinion, most of us are going to be fine with the stock fuel rail. It's only if you want something that looks a lot better off top of your intake manifold. And your injectors are going to have to match whatever build that you have. Uh, if you're pushing a turbo car or you're pushing NA supercharged, you need to just pretty much decide what injectors you're going to go with based on how much PSI you want to push. Or even if your duty cycle is too high on the injectors, then yes, you would upgrade them to a better set. All right, so now we're going to get into a little bit details with the internals of the TSX. Almost everything has been available since the Civic came out with the K24. There's a lot more options on how to build the internals and it's all on your budget on exactly what you want to do. I would say the easiest thing to do is Wiseco pistons with Carrillo rods. Uh, it's a great setup and it's also, also my setup. Skunk 2 makes great cams. You have a lot of drop-in cams available. It's all going to work with the K24. And everything really depends on your build, again, right? If you want uh, to go with an NA build, you want the high compression cams. If you want to go with a supercharged or turbo build, you want the lowest compression possible. Um, the cams, a lot of people, the cheapest option if you have the 0405 like I do, uh, is to put in the 06 cam. But again, if you're doing all that work, it's not going to make that much of a difference. It's a cheap option because people pretty much want to throw away their 06 cams and get a bit of money for it, but it's not the best option. I would go with a, any type of tuner cam and valves, you would not have to change. Valve springs is all up to you. The better you build the internal, the better it's going to last and the least problems you, have, you will have to worry about later on. And I'm just going to touch bases really quickly on the oil pump because I spoke about rev limit. And with the rev limit that our valves gives up on the TSX, you do not have to worry about changing your oil pump. If you want to rev to 8K for whatever reason, then yes, uh, I would recommend to upgrade to the Type S oil pump. But at 7300, you do not need to upgrade your oil pump on the TSX. And I don't even recommend going past 75 or 7600 with that pump, or even overall, even if you do upgrade to the Type S pump, K24 is a low torque engine and it works great at seven grand even. You might not even have to push it that hard, especially if you're just on the street driving. It's only gonna ruin your engine for a second of uh, fun. So I recommend keeping the rev limiter low. You can change your valves if you like to, but still keep the rev limiter low. All right guys, next we're gonna move on to what type of header you should get. Now on my car, I'm using the Weapon R. I have no issues with it, but I've had other cars that, uh, or other people tell me that they're using the Weapon R header and it has a slight crack in it eventually. Now if that happens, we all know that everyone is slamming their TSX and driving way too low than they should be. That could be one possible reason. I know a lot of people swear on this Surge Bow header and I know this is just one guy who's uh, making his headers and selling them, that's great. He's also doing a tune, which is great. You know, it's all good for him. But my recommendation to you is going to be to get the Weapon R header. Sounds amazing, performance gains are nowhere there. Uh, just one issue, apparently it cracks, but I've had mine for very long, no cracks, no issues. I think a lot of parts come down to how you treat them is how you're going to be treated by them. So, Weapon R header would be my recommendation for exhaust. Engine mounts, well, you can get 
many different engine mounts for the TSX. I will go with Innovative all times. It has three mounts, it has different options. Um, I don't even recommend getting the angle stiffy that a lot of people put on their car. It's pretty much bolting your car to your chassis. Like you can, you don't even need a stiffy to do that. You can do that with any kind of suspension damper that's even for your hood or your trunk. It, that's all it is. It's a damper that you're putting on your engine. It's not an actual mount. So if you're going to change your engine mounts, you think your engine mounts need to be changed, Innovative sells great mounts. They have the 75A, 85A, and 95. On my car, I'm using 85, and I don't even feel it. Now I kind of wish I went with the higher option, but I would say Innovative mounts would be uh, my recommended. Don't bother getting hasp or anything else. All right, so now we're gonna talk about a catback exhaust. I go with that header. On my car, I'm using the Skunk 2 exhaust, which I've had no issues with, no leaks, nothing. And I know a lot of people think the Skunk 2 is too obnoxiously loud. So you can go with something like the Medallion exhaust, the Apexi, and if you have a lot of cash flow and feel like putting some really good parts on your car, uh, you can go with the Jay's Racing, whether it's a single or dual outlet. Uh, you can never go wrong with Jay's Racing exhaust. All right, so that's pretty much intake to exhaust and everything in between. Uh, now, if you have all these parts and you know, you're throwing them on your car, you're going to need a great tuning software in order to put them to use. I do recommend going with Flash Pro, even if you have the older TSX 04, 05, buy an ECU, whether it's an auto or a manual ECU, and get Flash Pro. If you do a reflash, whether it's from Honda reflash or if you're taking Surge Bow reflash or AEM uh, computer, you cannot adjust those things as much as you can adjust a Flash Pro as you add parts later on in the year, next year, the year after, whatever the case is, Flash Pro is going to be your better investment. And you can also sell it when you're finished and pretty much make your money back. You might lose a bit, but you can make most of your money back selling your Flash Pro because it's the same exact software that you're going to get from Honda. So don't waste your time on getting a reflash for anything. Buy Honda, Flash Pro, and uh, it'll be worth the money. All right, so the next thing we're gonna be talking about is suspension. Uh, I think this is the most asked question, whether it's on a forum, on YouTube, on the Facebook group, at least once a month, someone is asking on what coilover should they get. And my first recommendation is going to be to get the BC BR type coilovers from BC Racing. Uh, there's also different options that you can get with the upgradable Swift Springs. You can get the extreme low option if you want to go low. And this is pretty much a coilover that you will be able to drive with every day. It's smooth, it feels great. And it's also stiff enough that you can also take it to a few track days and also enjoy it there. There's also better options like the HSD coilovers or the TNs that are more expensive and also the Buddy Club race spec which I'm using on my car which of course is more track orientated, uh, you pay a little bit more money, it's still okay for the street of course, uh, just that if you do want to take your car to the track, you should get a better coilover than the BC Racing coilover. Now if you also want to go the opposite way and cheap out on your coilovers just because you want to lower your car, there's your Naka coilovers. I know a lot of people do buy it because you know I get the feedback on uh, my channel but I don't recommend getting it only because I'm not sure how it rides. Now if someone does have it and wants to comment about how the Yonaka coilover rides, go ahead. But from what I know, if you're paying what, five or $600 for a coilover, I'm not going to expect the same ride quality as spending $1,500 on a coilover. All right, so in addition to suspension coilovers, there's also camber arms, which you can get from True Heart, for the, for the in addition to adding coilovers onto your car you're definitely going to want to change your front upper control arm uh, with a camera kit version there's the skunk 2 there's true heart there's hard rays and there's even some overseas options that can also help you out but my of course recommendation is going to be from skunk 2 it's the cheapest option it's the option that allows you to modify it and go as much camera as you want. On my car, I'm at negative four in the front, which is pretty good for the height that I'm at. If I was to go lower, of course, I would gain more camera. Now, if you are looking at changing the lower ball joint, there's the Jay's Racing option and the Hard Race option. The Jay's Racing option is usually out of stock because I'm not even sure if they make it anymore. Uh, the Hard Race option will be the best option to go with. 
Um, that's going to help your roll center adjuster and of course the car is going to ride much much better once you do that especially if you're lowered to the ground it's going to make you even lower and you probably want to adjust and come back up that's how much of a difference it's going to make of course okay now moving on to the rear of the car uh, you're going to want a camera kit you're going to want a tow uh, adjuster on the rear i would go with the sbc or ibok kit it's the same company but that's going to be the best option for your car. It's an you know, order one kit, you have everything ready. You go on the alignment and there's no issues. They both align from the outside. There's also the Ingles kit, which is a lot more pricey. It's the same design as the SPC kit. So for a cheaper option and better option, I would take the SPC over the Ingles and it's also more available for you. So once you've got your performance parts on, you've got your tune, you've got your ride height and alignment all set up, you're going to want to be able to stop pretty well. So the first thing I'm going to recommend is just for OEM replacements, it's going to be the StopTech uh, slotted rotors with a Hawk HP or HP Plus um, pad. Now that's going to be the best setup for the street. You don't have to worry about heating up your pad, you don't have to worry about too much brake dust. Now if you do want to get into a more aggressive pad, a uh, Hawk does sell the DTC 70 pad, which would require some type of heat before it gets to optimal performance. Uh, but again, if you're going to the track and you want to swap them in, it's a good, really good uh, choice, the Hawk DC, DTC 70. Now, if you're looking to even further upgrade your brakes, uh, there's a big brake kit that you can get. There's also OEM options that you can swap into the uh, TSX that's not going to cost too much there's the rl and tl options which are both uh, on the forum write-ups but in my opinion it's just an oem caliper it's not a performance caliper it's more for looks especially if you paint it it looks great but i would go with an actual maybe spoon or stop tech neo motorsports those are the more performance calipers if you do want to go with the cheapest option it would be the dc5 brembos although that car or sorry that brake setup is made to stop a car that is much lighter than the TSX and I would rate the OEM TSX caliper over the DC5 Brembo. The difference is the Brembo looks better. If you're all about looks, go ahead, go for it, but you're not going to get what you pay for when you buy the DC5 Brembo. The, another option that you can definitely go with that I've seen uh, recently and it's kind of a, I guess a new discovery is the Genesis Brembo's on a TSX. Now, I'm not sure exactly how that one works, but I have read up about it a little bit and I can't really speak on the experience with it. I don't even know how long it's been out or how long someone discovered this, but we'll soon see if it's a good option or not a good option. But if you want to go with a big brake kit, I would just get an aftermarket supplier. Uh, they look good, they perform well, and they're going to last. Alright guys, so now that you have your performance parts on, you've got your tune done, you've got your ride height and you've got your brake to stop you from all of that. Now you're going to want to know how is the car going to handle better around corners or even just around the street when you're turning and that's going to be upgrading your brace bars. Now the best upgrade for the brace bar is going to be your rear sway bar. I would recommend upgrading it to a TL Comtag or the Progress rear sway bar. It's going to make the biggest difference you feel on your car when turning. Uh, the progress one has adjustments so you can go either slightly stiff or even stiffer depending on your driving style and your comfort on the front strut bar there's too many options i'm using the jace racing strut bar on my car uh, I, of course i'm going to recommend whatever i'm using on my car for you to use on yours you can also get a bunch of undercarriage bars from ultimate racing uh, they come in white they have fender bars they have the rear bar they have the front subframe bars and i do think um, you know, you can get carried away with too many bars, but uh, it all depends on your driving style and exactly what you're trying to accomplish. If you look at the front of my car, I end up making a custom bar just because there's no front option available. And I really and truly did make it at first because I wanted my car to look closer like an Evo, which of course is one of my favorite cars. And it ended up helping out on the front since I removed my crash bar. All right, now that your brace bar is all taken care of, you install a few, you like how the car is starting to handle, but you realize around turns, even though it handles great, you're still losing speed. It's because you need to open up that transmission and put an LSD inside. In my car, I'm using the M Factory LSD with everything else being OEM, except for my clutch, of course. 
but everything else is OEM gear ratios and gears. Now, if you want to do a better swap, you can swap in the UR transmission that has an LSD in it and has better gear ratios. If you're keeping the TSX transmission, you can swap out third and fourth and go with some gear X gears, which is gonna give you a slightly better ratio, especially when you're going on a short track, it's gonna help a lot. And of course, if you're driving a manual car, you're going to wanna upgrade your clutch. There is no better thing to recommend than the Exidy Stage 2 clutch with the 8.9 pound flywheel. That is going to be the best option for your car as long as you're not making more than 250 a wheel torque. Now, if you are going past that, in my car I'm using an Exidy Twin Hyper Series which is a lot heavier and even though you're making more power, you're going to lose torque installing that clutch because of how heavy the flywheel is. But if you want to make a lot of power, you're going to need a lot of meat to back it up and that's why you have the heavier flywheel. Well, I hope you gained something from this video, whether or not your car is fully stock or it's a heavily modified TSX. I hope that this video gave you some type of insight on something you didn't know or something you want to know more about. Of course, there's many other questions that can be answered about the TSX, but uh, for now, this is what I thought of for this video. If you have a specific question you want me to tackle on my next video, uh, just leave me a comment. If you like the video please leave a like if you're not subscribed to me please subscribe i'm almost at 1000 and that's gold for the year and i'll see you soon